Coming up with Mike Singer from the Denver Post. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Of all of your game two adjust, adjustments, how high up is playing with aggression, playing with physicality, pace, and putting pressure on Phoenix's defense? Yeah, very high. You know, um, as I mentioned the last two days, uh, this reminds me of game one to game two in the first round, uh, kind of the same mindset of uh, the adjustments aren't necessarily the game plan. It's being a lot more disciplined within the game plan, within the personnel, but then all the intangibles that you just listed. You know, we only got to the foul line six times. Uh, we only contested 40 shots, which is a playoff low for us in this postseason. Um, just being a lot more aggressive, a lot more physical, a lot more urgent in everything we do. Um, we had that at times. You know, I, I mean, Anytime you're up by 10 points in the third quarter of a playoff game on the road, you're doing something right. The challenge is to be better and to sustain it for as close to 48 minutes as possible. Uh, we did not do a good job of sustaining that level of play. And we know that they have scored us, I believe, uh, 62 to 35 to close out that game. Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey, Michael, do you have any updates on uh, Michael Porter Jr. and Will Barton? And, and regarding Will, if he were to play, would there be uh, a minutes restriction? Uh, yeah, Michael Porter, you know, he received treatment the last couple of days. Um, he's feeling better. I do believe he'll be able to go tonight. Uh, obviously, we'll get final word and confirmation uh, in speaking with our training staff. But when I spoke with Michael earlier today, um, he said he's feeling much better. So I, I believe he should be able to go out there and play. Uh, Will Barton, uh, you know, he's kind of up in the air. Uh, I alluded to it yesterday. I think Will is definitely getting closer. Uh, we've been saying that for a little while now, but he's had a couple of really good days back to back. So uh, I think Will's a situation where let's see how he feels going through warmups, his pregame routine. Uh, and if he is able to play, yes, you, know, you don't come back from missing seven weeks and just go out there and play your usual minutes. So he'd be on a, uh, a very limited minute restriction if he is indeed able to play tonight. Gina Mizell, sons.com. Hey coach, good to see you. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, Tory Craig. When you look back on his time with you guys, just where do you feel like he developed most or, or grew the most as a player? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I love Tory, care about him. It's good, great to see him. Uh, as we play the Suns in this round, Gina, um, and, and definitely wish he was, you know, still in a Denver Nugget uniform. You know, that was the kind of impact Tory had on our team and our culture uh, for, the, for the years that he was with us. Um, you know, he was a G League player, a two-way two player for us initially. Uh, he earned my trust right away, knowing that I could throw him out there to guard one, two, threes, doesn't matter the position. He was going to give you that effort, that uh, the rebounding, the loose balls, just make those types of winning plays. Uh, and I think he's really grown on the offensive end, trying to figure out, okay, uh, I'm playing with a Jamal Murray, Nicole Jokic. This is how I have to play. I'm playing with a Devin Booker, or Chris Paul. This is how I need to play. Uh, make open shots, uh, always moving without the basketball, put pressure on the rim um, and, and make plays for others. Um, so yeah, I, I'm happy for Tori. Obviously, uh, I hope he doesn't make any more open threes against us. Uh, but, you know, he, he's definitely grown, and uh, we definitely miss him as well. Joel Rush, Forbes. Hey, Coach. Uh, Monty Williams just cited transition defense and boxing out and spacing on offense as areas they're focusing on. Uh, do you have any specific points of emphasis you've been working on with the guys this week? This week? I mean, I'm sorry, I've in the last couple of days. A lot of things. I mean, but, uh, you know, yesterday, there's only one day in between games. I was being better and sustaining it for 48 minutes. Barry Bloom, Sportico. Hey, Mike, how are you? The, uh, back to the 25 points in the last 20, 20 minutes. I mean, Okic had two of those points in the last 20 minutes and six in the second half. You alluded yesterday in the press conference after the MVP that this is a guy who's mentally and physically exhausted. And Charles Barkley said today that if Aiton plays him even throughout the series, you can't win the series. What do you think happened there? And what was the adjustment they made on Okic to shut him down? Uh, it's first of all, is Jokic not 
joking. I'm sorry. Well, you don't but, <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, uh, DeAndre Raiden's a good defender. You know I mean? So I don't know if they did anything, you know, really tricky. You know, a lot of it was that they played him straight up one-on-one. Uh, they weren't double teaming him uh, a lot. Uh, I think Nicole even alluded to coming into this series that he felt that DeAndre, you know, played him really well uh, in their regular season matchups. Um, so you have to give the Suns and DeAndre Ayton a lot of credit. Um, I think there's more one-on-one coverage. It wasn't anything that we haven't seen or some kind of really strategic game plan. Uh, so you give them credit. I think for us and for Nicola, uh, I think we settled way too much. I mean, yeah, we took 43s, but as they were going on that run, you know, it's a four point game with two minutes to go in the third quarter. I mean, so yes, we were up 10. We had lost the lead. We're down four, you know, four point game going into the fourth quarter. You're right there. And you just want to give yourself a chance on the road. And that four point lead goes to nine, that nine point lead goes to 20 and it went south in a hurry. Uh, but I think Nicola, as well as everybody else, has to have much more of an attack mentality and not just settling, facing up and shooting the jump shot that's first available. We have to put more pressure on the defense. We have to put more pressure on the rim and to put more pressure on the officials to maybe make some of those calls because you're only going to get those calls when you play with an attack mindset. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Leonardo Torres from El Comercio, Peru. Hi, Coach. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, the team is characterized by resilience and overcoming challenge. What must the team improve on defense to try to win tonight? Oh, there's a lot of areas. You know, we gave up 22 points in transition. Obviously, uh, only 12 turnovers, which is a great number, but 18 points off our 12 turnovers, which kind of let them go in transition. Mikael Bridges really hurt us in transition. He was their leading scorer. Um, the one-on-one defense, the KYP, know your personnel, discipline. Is he a right-hand driver? Is he a left-hand driver? Containing the ball. Uh, and then obviously just within our game plan, having a lot more communication and discipline in terms of executing the game plan and not giving up as many corner threes as we gave up. You know, that was not the plan to give up seven out of the 13 threes they made wide open in the corner. So uh, there's a lot of things we can be better at. You know, I applaud our guys from game one to game two. In the first round, we had a much different mindset and we were able to even the series. Obviously, that was at home. This is different. This atmosphere is incredible. Uh, the fans have made this uh, a very challenging place to play. But this is great. This is playoff basketball. And I think our guys will be up for, uh, for the challenge tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Coach.